Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and we're in front of the clutter zone, and we're doing something a little bit different today, and basically the reason for that is, last week, December 23rd, marked uh, the anniversary of us starting our YouTube channel, and our first video was our crazy dog. <laughs> We just basically posted it just to make sure we knew how to post videos on YouTube because we're a little technically challenged, eh? So that video really hasn't done that well. It's it's only maybe about, you know, 50, 55 views, something like that right now. Most of the videos have done pretty good, though. We've got a few that are up in the thousands and one that's way up over 10,000 views, which is pretty cool. And which brings us to the subject of this video and why am I doing this? Why am I making these videos? And basically what it comes down to is, and I didn't really have this as a goal when I started, but it's keeping me more involved in my hobby than I would have been otherwise. Uh, past years, I would have been lucky to build maybe one or two models or projects or whatever just because I'd be busy and I wouldn't have time or I wouldn't have the energy or anything like that. But I find that making the videos and posting them on YouTube uh, keeps my enthusiasm up. And I'll just give a bit of an explanation. Actually, about a year and a half ago, I started going to the local International Plastic Model Society meetings. And they were okay, but one of the problems I found was is they were once a month and they were Wednesday night at seven o'clock, which isn't a big deal, but when you work nights and you usually go to bed about 8.30 and the meeting goes till nine, it's kind of a pain. And I found that I was making excuses not to go to the meetings, so it really didn't work out. So as an example of how being involved in a group or showing off what you do can make a difference in your enthusiasm level in your hobby. Probably about 10 years ago, I used to be a member of a model railroading club. Uh, specifically, it was the London Engineers and it was N-Track. And for those of you who are not familiar with N-Track, basically it's, it's N scale, it's one to 160th scale model trains and each person has a four foot by two foot section of the model train layout. You might have one section, you might have three or four or whatever. And basically what would happen is, is you would take the segments to shows or special events and things and you would set them up. And usually what would happen is your module would sit in the corner of the basement or it would sit in the garage or whatever until maybe a week before you were going to do this show and then you'd say oh geez i better dust that off and do some work on it so you'd set it up in your workshop and you'd be all enthusiastic about it and you'd do whatever repairs you'd have to make and you'd start working on it and then come the day of the show of course you'd have to load your car and you'd load your car with all the equipment and everything and sometimes we'd have to drive for one or two hours to get to where we were doing the show and you would set the layout up and you'd be talking to the public and once again you'd be all enthusiastic and everything like that and you'd be people would be talking to you about what you did and and you know how you did it and that sort of thing and you'd be all fired up you'd be all enthusiastic oh yeah when i get home i'm just gonna work on this thing for months oh it's gonna be great and everything like that of course the end of the show it's a mad dash to take the layout apart reload it in the cars and then you've got to drive home. By the time you'd unloaded everything and you'd taken your module 
and brought it back into the house and set it down, you were like, you were done. You were tired. And inevitably what would happen is, is wherever you plopped your model routing module, your end track module, it ended up staying for two or three months until, oh, the next show. And then you'd set the thing up and you'd start working on it. And you'd be, geez, you know what? If I worked on this more than just one week, it would be really awesome. But it's just an example of how knowing that people are going to be seeing what you're doing and knowing that people are interested in it can make you a lot more enthusiastic about your hobby. And I think that's one of the reasons that a lot of people put their hobbies and things like that on YouTube. I initially started making videos for YouTube based on the encouragement of my kids. They're like, oh, Dad, you should make some YouTube videos. Oh, yeah, you'll get rich. Well, that's not going to happen. But at any rate... I gave it a try and uh, basically what I've tried to do is take away from other videos things that I like, combine them with other things I like, and hopefully people will watch my videos and they'll like what I'm putting out. And it is kind of nice to be a little bit part of a community as well because you kind of see the same people making comments and things like that. And as well as that, sometimes there'll be a project you, you stall on and knowing that people are kind of encouraging you to finish it or say, hey, I'd like to see that finished or whatever can sometimes give you a bit of a boost. People who've watched some of my past videos will know that uh, I work seven nights a week. So what happens is, is oftentimes I'll come down the stairs that are actually behind Logan taking the, filming the clutter zone right now and Probably, if I wasn't doing the YouTube videos, I like I said before, I probably wouldn't have half the projects done this year that I do. I would just go on past and over to where I sleep. Uh, there's not really a bedroom over there. There's a love seat I sleep on. Oh, <laughs> yeah. My children have all the bedrooms in the house. But at any rate, it's been it's been fun, and I think I'm going to keep on doing it and. I would like to thank everybody who's shown interest in the projects and all the people who have subscribed. And I'm not going to give you a list of what's coming up, mainly because it's going to change. If I was to uh, post a list of, yep, I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this, and people kind of got enthusiastic about this one, well, by the time I got this one done, I might end up working on this one. So I don't really want to say this is a list of upcoming projects and things like that because I oftentimes change my mind. And oddly enough, the new one doesn't work any better than the old one, but I still change my mind a lot. I don't want to kind of get people's hopes up about, oh, he's going to build the, the MI-10 next, and then I don't or anything like that. I am going to try to keep on adding some new things. I'm going to see if I can do some more prototype things like the, the heavy wrecker. I'm going to see if I can do more filming of things like that. Hopefully that people will be able to take away and, and use as research for stuff that for models they want to do. And as well as that, there's probably going to be some more videos from my kids when they do a project. Natasha has a project that's probably about three quarters done, so that's going to be coming up soon. And all I can say is uh, stay tuned, and thanks for watching. And until next time, keep on modeling.